So we said 15 was the cosine of 45 minus 30, 30 plus, and now I need to do the sine of 45 times the sine of 30. And this would be where it's great if you have all this stuff memorized. If not, you're just going to have to draw some special triangles every now and then to help you get through this. So cosine of 45 is 1 square root of 2. At least I don't have to worry about positive and negatives here. It's all in quadrant 1. The cosine of 30 was the square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 45 is also 1 over the square root of 2. And the sine of 30 would be the complement of the other one. So that would be 1 and a half. So that would be 1 half. And then you multiply this mess out a little bit. So we get the square root of 3 divided by 2 square root of 2 plus 1 times 1 is 1, 2 square root of 2. And this usually happens if you do this right most of the time you should get, if not all of the time, but you should get a common denominator here so you can actually add these. So the common denominator is 2 square root of 2 and I don't know what the square root of 3 plus 1 is so you can just leave it. Okay, and So you can just leave this for me, you don't have to multiply it out by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. If you did, you would end up with one of the answers that you just got for my challenge problems. <coughs> if you did all of the challenge problems. Questions on that one? How about 7 pi over 12? What can you do with that? How can I break up 7 pi over 12 so that I can work with it? Yeah, it's a over 3 and an over 4. So you got to think of these as like pi over 3's because it could be 1 pi over 3 or 2 pi over 3's or pi over 4's or pi over 6's. So you're looking for breaking this thing up into parts that you're familiar with. So one way that you can do this one would be to say that this is the cosine of 4 pi over 12 which doesn't look like a pi over 3, 4 or 6 yet but that should reduce, right? Plus, uh, I wrote that wrong. How much do I have left if I should have 7 over 12? So that's 3 pi over 12, right? So that's still 7 pi over 12. So that's the cosine of 4 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 3. And this one is pi over 4. Okay, and then this one reduces into parts that you know. So this one will be the cosine of pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 4. So now I'm in. I'm using this one over here. So I did this one right now. This one says subtract. And then you do the sine of pi over 3 and the sine of pi over 4. And special triangles. So cosine of pi over 3 is a half. Pi over 4 is 1 square root of 2. Minus the sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2 and this one is still 1 over the square root of 2. So this is 1 minus the square root of 3 times 1 is the square root of 3. The common denominator will be 2 square root of 2. And again you can leave this, you don't have to multiply this out for me. So there's really not much, <coughs> it's not a whole lot to learn here other than how to use the formula and how to recognize the parts. So sometimes the parts are pretty easy to recognize uh, sometimes it might be a little bit more challenging so we'll see it here with the sine of 19 pi over 12 so again I'm not going to try to justify um, the sum and difference formulas I mean they certainly you can prove them and I think the book does it for us so if you're interested in that you can take a look at it you don't have to know how to prove these okay but you do need to know how to break them up so what can I break the 19 pi over 12 into so that it's in parts that I know 12 and 7. 7 pi over 12, I'm not sure that that reduces in anything that I know. Huh? 7 pi over 12? Oh, then you have to break it up again, you mean? Yeah, I guess I could do that, but then I would have to, um, yeah. Oh, you, could, you could do it that way, would you just create more mess? Th try to think of it in two parts that you do know. Like 9 pi over 12 reduces to pi over... 3 pi over 4, right? 
that leaves you with 10 pi over 12, and then this breaking, breaking it up in this should work because 9 pi over 12 is 3 pi over 4. So that one I know. And 10 pi over 12 is 5 pi over 6. So that one I know. Um, nobody here mentioned it on the first one, but sometimes some of you work better in degrees. So if you want, you can you can convert it to degrees first and then try to break it up into degrees that you know. So and then you would be looking for 40 or 30, 45, and 60 and multiples of those. So it works the same way. Uh, changing it into degrees adds one extra step, but it's not like a, a difficult step. So that would be another way to do it if you're getting stuck on a, you know, on the radian measure. Convert it to degrees. See what see what it looks like there. Okay. So the sign is set up differently. Uh, this one's the sine of alpha plus beta. So alpha plus beta. So I need to do sine cosine and then plus cosine sine. So it's the sine of three pi over four times the cosine of 5 pi over 6 and then plus and then they swap so then it's the cosine of 3 pi over 4 and then it will be the sine of 5 pi over 6 and then you need to find all these values so 3 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4 would be here right so the sine here is going to be positive so that's 1 over the square root of 2. But if I do this with the cosine, the cosine of 3 power over 4 is going to be negative. Okay, and it is a 45 degree angle, so it's the same value, but this is a negative x here. How about 5 power over 6? So this was 3 power over 4. So 3 power over 4 had some positives and negatives. 5 power over 6 is over here, isn't it? It's just short of pi over or 6 power over 6. So over here again the sine is going to be positive but the cosine here is negative so what's the cosine of 30 degrees that would be the square root of 3 over 2 but then since I'm in quadrant 2 I have a negative negative. and the sine of 5 pi over 6 that is a half but that one is positive because it's in quadrant 2 so please make sure that you do check your negatives and positives do I have a common denominator again right away Yes? Okay, so it's a negative square root of 3 minus 1. Okay, looks sort of ugly, but you can certainly leave it. Questions on that one? So the challenge here really, most likely, I think, will be can you see how to break it up? If you can see that, then it's just a matter of working your way through this stuff, and it, it's tedious, but it's not super challenging anymore at that point. Okay, then you can also go backwards with those. So if I give you a pattern, so the pattern here is cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. Because the 40 and the 80 are the same in both. So what, which one goes with that? So clearly it's not a sine, right? So which one is cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine? That would be when you do, when you add them, right? So add alpha and beta. So <coughs> this whole mess could be written as the cosine of 40 plus 80. It's the same thing, which is the cosine of 120 degrees, right? Do we know what the cosine of 120 degrees is? Well, I think so. That would be about here. 1 squared to 3, 2. But in quadrant 2, this one is a negative, right? So this one is going to be worth negative 1 over 2. What they're not really telling you here is that this right now has four parts. They don't need to ask you these. So what I mean with that is that if you were just given this information and you were asked strictly for the sine of alpha plus beta, you would have to understand that you need to find the cosine of alpha and the cosine of beta before you can even try to answer this question. Okay. Um, why is it? Well, because what is the pattern for sine alpha beta? Well, that would be sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. So do you see here that if you ask for the sine of alpha and beta, you are still going to have to find the cosines of these two as well? So that's what we're going to start with. Okay, We're going to find the cosine of alpha based on what's given here. Well, if that's 3 over 5, 
and alpha is between pi over 2 and pi, then what quadrant am I in? I'm in quadrant 2, right? With the sign being opposite over hypotenuse. So if that's given, then what do you now know about this side here? That has to be 4 with a negative. So the cosine of alpha is going to be what? Negative 4 over 5. Okay, do the same thing for the cosine of beta. If you want to find out what the cosine of beta is, make sure you're in the right quadrant, so between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So where does that put you? In quadrant 4, right? And this one's an, I'm going to use this version, negative 1 over the square root of 5. So opposite's a negative 1. This is the square root of 5. So how do you find out what this side is? Right? And that should give you a... Two, is that correct? Yeah? Okay, now I can go answer questions C and D. So, what is the pattern for cosine alpha beta? Somebody go back to what I gave you in the notes. Cosine alpha plus beta is what? It's going to be the. Right? Cosine times cosine minus sine times sine. One, then just pick out the parts that you just found or that were given. So the cosine of alpha was negative 4 over 5. The cosine of beta is? Uh, I didn't find the cosine, did I? So the cosine of beta, I didn't write it out. It's 2 square root of 5. So that's 2 square root of 5. Minus <coughs> the sine of alpha, which is 3 over 5 and the sine of beta, and we're going to use the unreduced version because it's less work, less numbers. So that's a negative 8 plus, because this negative and that negative make a plus, plus 3 divided by 5 squared of 5. That's a negative 5 divided by 5 squared of 5. Those reduce, so it's a negative 1 divided by the square root of 5. Okay. In D, we already wrote down what the pattern is up here. So sine alpha, cosine beta, plus cosine alpha, sine beta. And then just fill in the parts. The sine of alpha was 3 over 5. The cosine of beta is 2 square root of 5. Plus the cosine of alpha was a negative 4 over 5 and the sine of beta was a negative 1 square root of 5. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6. This negative and that negative cancel each other, so this ends up being 6 plus 4 divided by 5 square root of 5. So that is 10 divided by 5 square root of 5. And then that reduces to 2 over the square root of 5. Okay. Um, like I said, you have sort of the cheat sheet that you can use. So don't have to sit there and memorize the stuff. You do have to know how to break it up and apply some of the things that you learned in the past. Because none of the things that I did here was really new other than how do you break things up or how do you combine it and use those new rules. So.